Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about cholecystitis. Also referred to as cholecystitis, either way it's the same thing, it's inflammation of the gallbladder. So what are some reasons this might happen? The number one most common cause is something called cholelithiasis, which are gallstones. Other reasons could include tumors, blockage of the bile duct, infection, or blood vessel issues in that area. Who is at risk? Now this is something that can happen to both men and women. It's just more common in women. So being a woman technically puts you at higher risk statistically, but it can definitely happen to men as well. Your diet plays a big role in this. So people who consume high fat diets Low calorie and low protein diets are at higher risk. The obese, people with type 1 diabetes, and then some people, unfortunately, it's just a genetic thing. So maybe you have it, you know, in your family, your mom had it, you're more likely to have it too. So these are the main reasons that somebody might be at risk for getting this. And if you work in the hospital setting as a nurse, if you're on any sort of med surge floor or even in the ER, someone's going to come in with abdominal pain, there's a good chance this might be the reason. It's pretty common. So what are these signs and symptoms? How is this patient going to present to you? This is very sharp, severe, like 10 out of 10 pain. And it's in a very specific area. It will be in the right upper quadrant. You could do something called Murphy sign. So a lot of times people come into the ER or the clinic or wherever they're coming in to report that they're having this abdominal pain and they're trying to say, it's not that bad, I can handle it, it's fine. And then when you go to do palpation and you actually start putting your hands on their tummy, woo, they jump because it hurts so bad, okay? They have a big reaction to that. So that's what Murphy sign is. So it's that pain that they feel upon palpation when you actually touch their stomach. They could have nausea and vomiting, especially if they've just eaten a really high fat meal. So something like fast food, McDonald's, that kind of stuff. This can cause nausea, vomiting, which can cause even more abdominal pain, which could cause them to seek treatment. They can experience gas problems, so belching and uh, flatulence, so passing gas. They could have a fever, especially if this is related to an infectious cause. Hopefully it doesn't get to this point. Hopefully they come in before this happens, but this can actually cause them to have jaundice, so the yellowing of the skin and the mucous membranes. They can report clay-colored stools or fatty stools, so when they go to the bathroom, they have a bowel movement, their stool will look a little tannish, and then it might float because it's full of fat. Uncontrollable itching that's like just driving them so nuts, okay? And then this pain, most commonly, is in that right upper quadrant, but for some people it doesn't always present that way. Some people it is referred pain, and they will come in complaining of shoulder pain, usually in the right side. So they'll say, oh god, my shoulder is just killing me, or my back, it hurts so bad. So that can throw you off when you're assessing your patient. So just know that that does happen, they can have referred pain. So now that we know the signs and symptoms, let's talk about the labs and what the nurse can do about it. What do we expect to see for our lab values for this patient? Everything's going to go up, and that's not a good thing. So our white blood cell count is going to go up. We're going to see a left shift because of that inflammation. Our bilirubin, amylase, lipase, AST, LDH, all that stuff is going to be increased. And then your cholesterol is going to be over 200. So everything's going to be going up. When it comes to our diagnostic test, it's kind of going to depend on how the patient presents to you initially. So if they have those like classic signs and symptoms where you know like, okay, this is a gallbladder problem, they're probably going to do the HIDA scan right away. If they're not sure and it's just kind of like, I'm having abdominal pain and we need to figure out like what the pain is, they're probably going to either order an ultrasound, an x-ray, or a CT scan. And once they do that, they may identify gallstones, because remember that's the most common cause of this. 
and then they'll know what to do further. The HIDIS scan, this is actually the best one. It's better than the ultrasound x-ray and the CT scan because what happens is you put in this radioactive dye and it attaches to like the bile producing cells in the body and then you kind of watch it go with the flow. So it goes from the liver to the small intestine and then you can see if there's a blockage anywhere along the way. And that's going to help doctor, because we're just going to assist with this procedure, that's going to help doctor realize like, okay, yes, this is cholecystitis, we need to treat this. What is the nurse's role in all of this? We're going to administer medications. Remember, the pain is like super severe 10 out of 10 pain, right? So the best and most commonly used pain medication for this patient population is morphine. So we're going to give them morphine. If the cause is related to gallstones, we might give bile acids to dissolve those gallstones. And we can also give antibiotics. We're going to have to do a lot of patient education, especially when it comes to like dietary teaching and weight loss. If they are to have some sort of procedure, we're not going to be performing it. The doctor will, but we can assist and educate. So common things. To remove gallstones, you can do an ESWL or an ERCP. Those are pretty commonly done if that's all they're doing. If it's a little bit more severe than that and they actually want to remove the gallbladder itself, that's the cholecystectomy, you're going to have to prepare that patient for that surgery. We want to encourage weight loss in these patients. And then, of course, proper education when it comes to their diet. So their diet should be low in fat. They should have small, frequent meals and they should avoid gassy foods. So what's a gassy food? Broccoli is a gassy food. High fat foods like McDonald's fast foods, those are gassy foods. So that's the nurse's job and it's really going to depend on how the patient presents and how bad it is for the things that we're going to do. The last thing I wanted to do really quick was talk about some potential complications that can occur. Now I wanted to point out a couple of complications that can occur. The first of which is the gallbladder ruptures. So we haven't gotten to it in time and the gallbladder has ruptured. This can cause an abscess to be formed, infection that can lead to sepsis that if we don't do anything about it could potentially kill the patient, right? So this is important to know. Something else that could happen that is actually very rare but does exist is called bile peritonitis. And this is when they go in to do the surgery and they go to drain the bile out, they don't drain enough out, okay? So this can cause an overall infection, which again, can lead to sepsis, which can lead to death. And then the last thing I wanted to point out, I don't know if I would consider this like a complication, it's just kind of like a matter of fact thing. If the cause is gallstones and we remove your gallstones, it doesn't mean you'll never have gallstones ever again in your life. Most people who have gallstones will still get gallstones later on. It's probably not going to be as bad. They're going to expect it. They're going to know what to do, do the weight loss, do the dietary changes, all that stuff. But just because, you know, you've gone through this once and we've removed them doesn't mean it will never happen to you again. There is a chance gallstones may reoccur. And you've got to educate your patient on this so that they know at the first sign of this, when to call doctor or when to come into the hospital and be seen. So that was my video. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.